A reminder, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at FlipSideGaming.com. You'll get 10% off orders over $10 and help with the channel at the same time. So I gotta be honest with you guys, this week something happened. Something big. While I was cleaning up my apartment, I found something in the very bowels of it. Something that would change the very way we look at life itself. Thankfully, because I'm a bit of a weirdo, I have cameras set up throughout my entire apartment and I was able to capture it on film, so here it is. So thanks to help from my Patreons, I was able to get a tripod extender, which allows me to suspend my camera over the table, giving us the top-down shot that a lot of people have been asking for. Bear in mind, this is the first time I shot with this kind of style, so it's a bit rough, but I think it's got a lot of potential, and I've been able to adapt and fix it for the future games. In this week's game, you might remember him, Don is playing Kirkesh and keeps a hand with Mirage Mirror, Paradox Engine, Myriad Landscape, Mistress Factory, Cogwork Assembler, Aetherflux Reservoir, and a Mountain. Kenny, who's new to the channel, is playing Neheb and keeps a hand with Fall of the Titans, Chandra Flamecaller, Nettle Drone, Darksteel Ingot, Thought Vessel, and two snow-covered mountains. Tom, who's also new to the channel, is playing Marin and keeps a hand with Rasiketh, Birds of Paradise, Sepulchural Primordial, Disciple of Bolas, Baron Moor, and Swamp. And lastly, Dan, who's new to the channel and the store, is playing Mael and keeps a hand with Overwhelming Stampede, Engulfing Slagworm, Argothian Worm, Temple of the False God, Needle Spire, Crumbling Vestige, and Forest. Don wins the die roll and starts us off. Don plays a tapped myriad landscaped and passes. Kenny plays a snow-covered mountain and also passes. Tom plays a temple of malady, scrying one. He keeps it on top. Dan plays a needle spire tapped and passes. Don plays a mountain and casts Nim Death Mantle. Kenny plays another snow-covered mountain before casting Thought Vessel. Tom plays a barren moor tapped and pays one to cast Birds of Paradise. Dan plays a crumbling vestige and passes. Don plays a Mistress Factory before paying two to crack the landscape and find two mountains. Kenny plays a Nykthos Shrine to Nyx and pays three to cast a Darksteel Ingot. Tom plays a Forest and taps out to cast Marin. He has nothing to return at the end of his turn with a Marin trigger and passes. Dan plays a Plains and passes turn. Don plays a Terrain Generator and generates some terrain by paying two and plopping out a mountain. Kenny plays a Dust Bowl and pays to cast Neheb before passing to Tom. Tom plays a Swamp and moves to combat. He swings Marin at Dan for three and pass his turn. Dan plays a forest and pays four to cast an Argothian Worm, who, upon entering, asks if any of his opponents would like to sacrifice a land to put it back on top of his library. No one really wants to do this though, and Dan gets a worm and passes to Dawn. Dawn plays a mountain and casts a Mirage Mirror. Not finished, he then brings out an Aetherwork Marvel. Kenny taps out on his turn to cast a Chandra Flamecaller. He uptakes her to make two three-powered elementals with haste and swings Neheb at Tom and the two elementals at Dawn. In his second main phase, Kenny gains 10 red mana and casts Fall of the Titans with Surge Cost to deal 6 damage to Dan's Worm and Tom's Marin. He uses his remaining 3 mana to cast Nettle Drone and passes, exiling his elementals at the end of turn. Tom's turn is pretty simple, and he plays a Swamp and pays 6 to recast his commander before passing turn. Dan plays a Temple of the False God and casts Mael before passing to Dawn. Dawn plays a Mage Ring Network as his land for turn and has his Mirage Mirror become a copy of Neheb. Dawn then swings his copy of Neheb at Tanny for 4, who takes it. Don then uses the mana in a second main phase from Neheb to cast Aetherflux Reservoir and pays 3 to cast Cogwork Assembler, gaining 2 life from the reservoir on cast. Kenny drops another snow-covered mountain and starts his turn off right by tapping the Nettle Drone to deal 1 to everyone. He then uses Nykthos to make 5 red mana and pays 3 to cast Basalt Monolith, which untaps his Nettle Drone. Kenny then retaps the drone to deal another 1 to everyone. He then uses the remaining mana and lands he has to cast Chandra's Ignition, targeting Neheb. This deals 4 damage to all of Kenny's opponents and every creature on the board, and Tom gains an experience counter from the bird dying while Marin is out. Kenny then upticks Chandra once more and gets 2 more beaters and moves to combat. Kenny swings Neheb at Dan, and 1 elemental each at Tom and Dawn. In his second main phase, Kenny gains a ton of red mana, but with only one spell in hand, he casts a Vandal Blast Overloaded. Dawn activates his mirror in response to the spell and has it become a copy of a land to save it. Tom plays a command beacon and sacrifices it to bring Marin back to his hand. He then casts her for 4 and moves to his end step. He uses Marin's end of turn trigger to bring out the Birds of Paradise from the graveyard and passes turn. Dan plays a forest and taps out to cast Engulfing Slagworm, which is hard to see due to the glare unfortunately. Dawn casts Kirkesh Onaki Ancient in his main phase and passes to Kenny. Kenny plays a Goto Bandit Warlord in his main phase and goes to find an equipment. He finds Darksteel Plate and puts it into play. He then pays to equip it onto Goto before using Chandra's minus X ability to deal 4 damage to every creature. 
This gives Tom another experience counter as his bird dies and Kenny moves to combat. He swings the habit Don, who has his Mirage Mirror become a copy of the engulfing Slagworm before blocks. Don loses 3 from the Afflict trigger, but also gains 6 from the Slagworm destroying Neheb, and as a result gains 3 life. This unfortunately puts a bit of a damper on Kenny's parade, so he passes turn. For Tom's turn, he plays a forest and passes. Dan plays an Opal Palace for his land for turn, and recasts Mael, who gets 2 counters upon entering thanks to the palace. He then swings the Slagworm at Kenny, who chumps with his indestructible Goto. The life gain trigger still resolves though, and Dan gains 3 life. Don casts a Triskelion in his main phase, and passes to Kenny. Kenny activates Chandra's zero ability to wheel his hand and draw that many plus one. He has only one card to discard, a Stormkirk Occultist, which he pays the madness cost to cast it as he discards it. Kenny then casts one of the cards he drew, Molten Psyche, which has Metalcraft and forces everyone to shuffle their hands in and draw that many. Because of the Metalcraft, all of his opponents take damage based on how many cards they've drawn, so Don loses one and Tom and Dan lose five. Kenny then casts Swiftfoot Boots and moves to combat. He swings Goto at Tom for 3 and untaps him, which he isn't supposed to do since he's not a samurai. Bad Kenny. Tom plays a forest for his turn and casts Damnation. This wipes away most of the creatures, except for Goto, and Don removes 2 counters from Fiskelion to kill Chandra and deal the last one to deal 1 to Tom. With nothing else, Tom passes turn. Dan plays a tap fortified village for his land for turn and pays 4 to cast Thran Dynamo. He then uses his new Dynamo to help cast Quicksilver Amulet. Dan isn't finished though and drops a copy of Illusionist Bracers before passing to Dawn. At the end of Dan's turn, Dawn puts a counter on his Mage Ring network. Dawn plays a newer version of Basalt Monolith in his main phase before casting Kirkesh. He then passes to Kenny. Kenny plays a Snow Covered Mountain for his land drop and taps a lot to recast Neheb. He then equips Neheb with some shiny new shoes and moves to combat. He swings both Goto and Neheb at Dan and Hawkeye Dawn catches the little misplay from last turn telling Kenny that Goto doesn't untap because he isn't a samurai. Kenny then passes turn. Tom plays a Swamp and casts Marin. He then moves to his end step and brings back his birds before Dan starts his turn. Dan casts an Azor's Gateway in his main phase and activates it to draw a card and exile a card. There is a slight misunderstanding on how the card flips, but Kenny is kind enough to explain that it has to be 5 cards of different mana costs and not just one card with a converted mana cost of 5. New cards can sometimes be a bit confusing, so thank you to Kenny for helping Dan out. Dan then activates his Quicksilver Amulet to pop out a Symbiotic Worm and pass his turn. At the end of Dan's turn, Dawn activates the mirror to become a copy of Basalt Monolith, then taps the mirror copy to untap the original copy. He also pays one red with Kirkesh to copy the untap trigger of the original, and before the second untap trigger occurs, he pays to add another counter to his Mage Ring network. All of that to put one counter on a land. Thanks a lot, Dawn. Dawn makes six mana by copying the untap trigger as he did at the end of Dan's turn, and uses it to cast a Dreamstone Hedron. He then makes his mirror a copy of the Hedron and pays to sacrifice the original, paying one extra red with Kirkesh to copy the ability and draw six instead of three. Dawn then plays a Rogue's Passage and pays to cast Paradox Engine. He then pays one to cast Animation Module, which untaps all of his non-land permanents. Dawn then casts Reforce the Souls, floating three additional colorless mana, and everyone wheels. His mirror and monolith untap, and he taps them once again to get six more, going to nine, before using two of it to cast Lightning Greaves. They get to untap again, and he floats more to cast Swiftfoot Boots, untapping once more. Dawn does this all again when he casts a Gleaming Barrier. Dawn then uses some of the mana to cast Spine of Ishsa, and untaps his stuff before forgetting to blow something up. Dawn then sacrifices his mirror copy of the Hedron to draw three more, and casts a Genesis Chamber, gaining more colorless. He then casts a Mind Stone, gaining even more colorless. He then sacrifices the Mind Stone to draw a card, and in a sad state of affairs, has nothing to do with over 30 colorless mana and has to pass. If only mana burn were still a thing. Kenny plays a snow covered mountain and casts a solemn simulacrum. He grabs a tapped snow covered mountain and also gains a mirror token. Kenny then casts an extra planar lens, exiling a snow covered mountain, and Dawn rages a little even though he just made like 30 mana. Kenny swings in the head at Dawn, who at the end of the declare attack step flashes in a shimmer mirror. He also gets a mirror token from the Genesis Chamber, which he uses to block, but still takes 3 damage from Afflict. In Kenny's second main phase, he casts Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger, who's on cast trigger exiles the Spine of Ishsa and Symbiotic Worm. Oh yeah, and Kenny also gets another mirror. Kenny then puts the Darksteel Plate onto Neheb and passes turn. Tom plays a Swamp and casts a Runescarred Demon, gaining a mirror token. He then casts Marin's best little green buddy, Spore Frog, and moves to combat. He swings Marin at Dan and passes turn, returning the Acidic Slime in his graveyard to his hand with Marin's ability. Dan casts an Elemental Bond in his main phase, a card I've really come to love in EDH. 
He then activates Quicksilver Amulet to put out a Penumbra Worm, and I'm starting to detect a bit of a theme. Dan then casts Metamorphosis, a card that I'd never seen before, but gains 8 green mana for creatures only, at the cost of 1. He also gains a 6-6 Black Worm token from it dying. He uses that mana to cast Scaled Worm, which gives him a second Mirror token for the turn, and Dan plays a Windscarred Crag, gaining 1 life. He then remembers that he was supposed to draw from the Elemental Bond, and does so. Dan then casts a Sol Ring, the first of the game, and passes to Dawn. Dawn draws a card for turn, and passes. Kenny draws for turn, and casts an Aggravated Assault. Tom does the responsible thing, and sacrifices his Spore Frog to prevent all combat damage before the spell resolves. Kenny wants some justice though, and moves to the start of his combat step, but is met with more resistance as Don Chaos Warps Ulamog. Kenny hits another snow-covered mountain, Kenny then moves through his combat step, and casts a Tower of Fortunes in his second main phase. Kenny also plays Command Beacon as his land for turn, and activates Nykthos, and uses some of his rocks to activate the tower to draw four. Tom starts his turn off right by casting an Acidic Slime to blow up Aggravated Assault. He then casts Pawn of Ulamog and moves to combat. Tom swings the Runescar Demon at Kenny for 6, and moves to his end step, returning the Spore Frog to the field, and realizing he should have gotten two more mirrors. Dan plays a Jungle Shrine for his land for turn, and drops a Hunting Ground, but not having Threshold, it sadly does nothing. He then casts a Fire of Yavimaya to make sure that all of his creatures have haste, and casts Overwhelming Stampede. All of his creatures get plus 7 plus 7 and trample, and Tom makes it known that if he doesn't get attacked, he won't pop the frog. Dan takes fate into his own hands, deciding that someone has to die this turn, and Kenny unfortunately has been messing with everyone, and Dan decides that Kenny's gotta get the horns, or should I say scales, and kills him. Don plays an Inventor's Fair on his turn, and sacrifices the fair to find an artifact. He finds Oracle's Vault, and puts it into his hand. Don then untaps the monolith, and casts the vault, untapping the monolith once more. Don then activates the vault, and pays one red with Kirkesh to exile the top two cards of his library, which he can play this turn, and puts two brick counters in the vault. Don hits a mountain, and duplicant, and casts the duplicant, exiling Marin. He gets to untap his stuff once more, and Don activates the animation module to put a third brick counter on the vault, and taps the vault. He exiles the top card, but unfortunately it's another land, and Don passes turn. Tom recasts Marin in his main phase, and moves to combat. He swings the Runescarred Demon at Dawn for 6 in the air, and returns Sifter of Skulls to his hand at the end of turn. Dan casts Johan in his main phase, gaining a mirror token. Johan is kind of an expensive way to give his creatures vigilance though, but it works for Dan and he swings everything at Tom, who chumps with his mirror tokens, gaining 4 experience counters as they die. With nothing else, Dan passes to Dawn. Dawn activates the Vault in his main phase, paying 1 red to copy it. He hits a land, and Ashnod's Altar. He gets to play it for free, and untaps all of his non-land permanents. Dawn then casts Sunburn's Invocation, which untaps his stuff, and Dawn taps the vault while it's on the stack to hit a combustible Gear Hulk. The Gear Hulk comes into play, and he picks Dan, who has Dawn put the three into the graveyard, and Dawn reveals eight converted mana cost worth of cards. Dan then activates his Quicksilver Amulet to cheat out Palaka Worm, gaining seven life. Dawn then activates Vault once more, copying it with Kirkesh, and hits his own Goto and a Goblin Welder. At this point though, the game is pretty much his, as he's able to cheat out two artifacts by copying the Welder trigger, after Don gears him up with Lightning Greaves, and Don brings back Aetherflux Reservoir and Nim Deathmantle. Things then spiral out of control, as Don is able to tap the vault and cast things for free off the top, untapping everything else and gaining a ton of life with the reservoir. As soon as Don has more than 50 life, he activates the Aetherflux Reservoir, paying one red to copy it with Kirkesh to kill Tom and Dan. Game review time, so there is a lot to talk about in this game. First and foremost, what did you guys think of this angle? I realized that it probably wasn't the best, there was a lot of glare and it was kind of off center, but I've since downloaded the GoPro app on my phone and I can now set it up significantly better as you'll see on Thursday's game. I think I'll have to also rework the overlay and have it going horizontal as opposed to vertically because it seemed to take up a lot of the side space in this kind of format. But please let me know what you think in the comments below, it is crucial that I get your feedback so I can help improve and make it a more visually enjoyable experience for everyone. I think the number one lesson to learn from this game is never ever ever leave a Paradox Engine unattended. There were two opportunities in this game where Kenny or Tom could have taken care of it, but both times they went for other lesser targets. I think the bigger of the two mistakes was Kenny not using Ulamog to exile it. I say this because had Tom blown it up with Acidic Slime, Red has a lot of ways to recur the artifact and it wouldn't have dealt with it permanently, whereas Ulamog would have gotten rid of it for the rest of the game. There was also a lot of strange threat assessment. I understand why Kenny was attacking Dan, but everyone else seemed to let Kenny go, and also Don. I know Don plays politically most of the time, and he's got a real poker face, but that shouldn't have stopped people from committing some resources to slowing him down. 
please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTG Mudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash MTG Mudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash MTG Mudsta. This video is brought to you in part by support from my Patreons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit my Patreon link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.